why are so many women struggling with hormonal balance, with fertility issues, endometriosis, PCOS, amenorrhea, why? Today I'm gonna to talk about it with my good friend Carrie, so stay tuned. Welcome back my friends, my name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you so much for being here and clicking on today's video. Today, I'm gonna give you an Instagram Live that I did on Tuesday, July the 19th with my good friend, Carrie Bennett, also known as Carrie B Wellness. Now, not only is she a good friend of mine, she is also one of my teachers and someone that I am partnering with to teach a fertility course that's starting in mid-August. If you're interested in that, make sure you check out the information section. There will be a link that you can follow that will give you much more information than just this video. So check that out. But we talk in this Instagram live extensively about why so many women are having hormonal issues and they are following a lot of them a good diet, maybe not all of them. Diet is definitely foundational, which we address in this video but they're trying to do a lot of the right things that a lot of experts on YouTube are telling them to do, a lot of doctor experts, fertility doctor experts are telling them to do, and they're still not able to have either hormonal balance or a successful pregnancy. And so this is a topic that you'll see I have become really passionate about sharing about because I think a lot of women suffer with these issues like infertility and they don't talk about it. I did not talk about it for a year because I was processing a lot of it emotionally and I still am processing that to a degree, but it is time that we stop being ashamed and start talking about some of these issues a little bit more. So I really hope that you enjoy this chat with my friend Carrie. Again, we're gonna talk about some of the things that most people completely ignore and or write off when it comes to our fertility health. And again, some solutions that people can look to if that is a problem that they are trying to solve, whether it be just hormonal balance in general or fertility in general. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Make sure to leave us a comment and please do share this video with anybody that you feel could be helped by this information. As I mentioned in this chat, there are millions of women that are struggling with these issues. And I think a lot of them are afraid to talk about it. They're ashamed to talk about it. We've made this a shameful thing in our society and I kind of want to stop doing that as much as, as, as possible. So I hope you guys enjoy this chat and I'll talk with you again soon. So I'm, I just added Carrie. Hi. Sarah. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Great. I was just kind of explaining to everyone that we're going to definitely talk about the fertility aspect but if you're not necessarily on a fertility journey, you can still glean a lot from this conversation because it's really heavily focused on balancing hormones, right? Yeah, absolutely. This has everything to do with when you have balanced hormones, you can have a baby, right? It, right. It, it, then you can also just thrive, right? It, this, this can be applied across the board. So it's a really exciting topic. But specifically, we geared this, you know, the class we geared towards fertility because we see that as a huge issue. And you have been on such an interesting journey yourself. So really going to be a fascinating discussion today. And I'm just, I'm excited for this course, too. I can't say enough about it. I'm just super pumped to be able to teach this information. I am too. And it's, you know, ever since I announced my pregnancy about a couple months ago, I, and I was talking with you, that's how we kind of came up with the idea to even do this. I get messages probably on a daily basis from women, and not just women my age, but women in their thirties and women in their late twenties who are like, I have been trying to have a baby for a couple of years and I can't, you know, I've had losses. I have not been able to actually even get pregnant. I have all these issues and can you help me? And I'm like, I've just been getting so overwhelmed with a lot of these messages that I'm like, it's hard. And it, I can't just put up a post. I can't just put up a video <laughs> that's really going to address this topic in depth the way that it needs to be addressed, you know? Absolutely. Because some people are coming at this from such different, different journeys and have at this point, if you're on a fertility journey, you've done a ton of your own research. And sometimes it's hard to say, like, 
to sort it all out, right? Like you, yeah. you, you know, you know the story. And so it's really cool to have to view this from a quantum lens, because I think it really helps people start to recognize what's truly important when it comes to balancing their hormones. Right. And, you know, the thing with the, a lot of the women that I've been talking to is that they were kind of doing a lot of the similar things that I was doing before I met you, before I met Corey, before I met Dr. Cruz, before I met everybody that's really in this quantum realm. They're doing a lot of the same stuff that I was doing. And they're like, why is this not working? <laughs> you know, I'm spending... Five hundred, a thousand dollars a month alone on supplements. I'm eating like the perfect diet. I'm, you know, I'm, and it's funny. We all were kind of following the same people on YouTube. There's like these fertility experts, and they have all these, you know, short little ten minute clips of like, you know, this is all you need to do in order to get pregnant, and this is the food you need to eat. This is a superfood, and this is a super supplement. And all these women I'm talking to, they're doing it. They're following, and some of them have paid hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to work one on one with these experts, you know, and some of the results are pretty heartbreaking, because number one, they're not getting pregnant. But number two, I've talked to a number of women that have done cleanses and things with these fertility experts, and it's left them in worse shape than they were before they actually did these cleanse and like three day fasts and things like that. So I want to definitely dive into how what you and I are going to be talking about in our course and, and just how we approach fertility is different than a lot of what you can find out there on the internet. A hundred percent. And that's not to say that, you know, nutrition isn't important, right? Okay. We fully value that. I don't want anyone to think like, you know, eating processed garbage foods is a good thing. But I think you have to recognize these days that our environment even in the past five years, is drastically different than it ever has been. And that has a direct effect on our mitochondrial health, which is why we have mitochondrial health as such a huge emphasis when it comes to helping people balance their hormones out, you know, become pregnant because of the fact that mitochondria are like, they kind of run the show, you know, they kind of, they kind of and so, so to address just diet and exercise, it's not going to cut it anymore. You know, the paradigm has to shift to recognize that there's other really key areas when it comes to hormone balance and viewing it through, like I said, the quantum lens, it just makes so much sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I feel like we're, like you said, we're exposed to so many more things, so many more stresses to our bodies than we were. I have a daughter who's 14 and I actually, with her, got pregnant on the pill accidentally. <laughs> you know, when I was 28. But I'm thinking back, when she was conceived, there was no Wi-Fi, right? There was, we didn't have the towers. We didn't have all these different dresses on our bodies. We didn't have AirPods. The cell phones were completely different. I think the iPhone hadn't even come out yet. Which we, we probably still had incandescent bulbs even. You know yeah. I mean? Like, there was, like we were just transitioning light bulbs. I mean, you're right. right. It's yeah. shifted. Yeah, it has. I was talking with, uh, with you know, Kelly, who's in our, our master class. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she and I were having this conversation because she's got two grown kids. And she's like, I don't even know how I got through my pregnancies back then because I was not eating the kind of healthy diet that I am now. And she's like, yeah, but we didn't have all these like stressful interferences on our bodies back then. So um, that's definitely something I think people are unaware of. So how would someone listening to this kind of understand that, you know, like, okay, what does that mean exactly? Well, I mean, I think we have, when we go back to like mitochondria running the show, you have to recognize that, um, and I never knew this until I studied quantum health, that mitochondria make our master steroid or our master sex hormone pregnenolone. And so if the mitochondria are basically responsible for making pregnenolone, it means that mitochondria must be really, really important players when it comes to our body's ability to become pregnant, right? And so what do we hear? Oh, infertility, what drives infertility? What drives infertility? Well, stress can play a huge right. role. And mitochondria happen to be 
massive antenna. They can sense our electromagnetic fields, the electromagnetic frequencies in our environment. And that's what's massively changed since you had Alexa, since, you know, even since I had Luke, my first, my first child, um, the electromagnetic fields nowadays are insane. We have more wireless technology than ever. And if my mitochondria can sense that, and they're basically just de deciding whether or not Carrie's in a stressed out state and we can't, you know, we can't make a baby. She's too stressed. The environment is not safe or yes, Carrie's in a calm environment and, and, and things are copacetic and we can make a baby. If it, it comes down to it, my electromagnetic field environment is a massive player when it comes to my body being able to think I'm in a safe place and able to have a baby versus not. I need to, uh, you know, fight or fight or flee from the saber tooth tiger. Yeah, I feel like we use the, and even these like fertility experts that you watch on YouTube and different doctors that you kind of investigate and try to look at their methods, they all acknowledge that stress is a huge part of infertility. It's like, but what they say is like, you need to meditate more, which I agree with. I meditate every day, twice a day. You know, you need to do, you need to change your lifestyle, but nobody addresses non-native EMF. And if you bring it up with certain people, then they tell you you're completely insane, not to worry about it. And I was told that when I was on my journey, you know, and just like, why I'm doing everything right. Why is it not working? And literally when I started implementing a lot of the stuff we're going to be doing in our course, but one of the main things I implemented was non-native EMF mitigation. I got a kill switch made sure Wi-Fi was at least off in, at night, made sure I was turning circuit breakers off at night, which I'm still doing, you know, so many different things I started just mitigating in my environment that are, they seem complicated at first, but once you do it, it's just like a habit. It's super, super easy. So what, I know we have this like, you know, 98, 99% of our body is water molecule, right? And that non-native EMF influencing the water molecule in the body is a huge huge form of stress but can we i guess <laughs> anyone listening to this might just have been like what in the hell did she just say <laughs> can you sure. make that a little simple for people so they really truly understand the impact of non-native emf on the cells of our body yeah absolutely so like the water in our body is very very different than what we think of as water in a glass so i think everyone would would recognize that our body is you know, 70% water, we hear that a lot. And, you know, uh, you, if you actually lay it out molecule by molecule, if you line up all the molecules in the body, 99 out of every 100 molecules in the body is water. So we're full of water, like water is everywhere. But it's not this water that sloshes around like a liquid. It's actually water that arranges and organizes itself in a structured phase. And it does that naturally next to what's called hydrophilic surfaces or just biological surfaces. So my cell is full of biological surfaces that structures this water. And the structure of the water actually gives my cells enough energy, which we can call redox potential, we can call voltage, we can call electrons, right? And my cells need to have enough of that energy to be able to just function at their best. If I have cells in need of repair or that are damaged, I even need a little more of this voltage. And the problem with non-native EMFs is that it destroys the structure of this water. It just depletes this structured water. So it's just another way of saying I'm losing energy. I'm losing electrons. I'm losing voltage. And that, again, is another stressor to the mitochondria because the mitochondria are always trying. Like, what do they do? They take this voltage. They take these electrons and they try to to make more water you know and they try to and they actually try to make infrared which helps keep the water structure but if we're being bombarded with these signals that are continually stealing these electrons and stealing our voltage no wonder my mitochondria are saying no this is not a good time for carrie to have a baby there's something major that's stealing all of her energy exactly yeah and that's you know what we have to look at the body as what I love that you talk about in so many of your posts and that we're definitely going to be reiterating in the course is that our body is electric and it's, it's electric over chemical. And the whole issue that I have that obviously it didn't work for me trying to look at my body as this chemical thing, let's put in food, let's put in supplements, you know, which are important. Like you and I acknowledge, like, I eat a very, very clean, healthy diet. Like I, I want my body to have these essential building blocks, essential amino acids, 
choline, folate, all that. So I want all that amazing nutrition coming from my food. But what actually is over, you know, more important than that is the electrical messages going through the body because of this water network in the body, because it runs through the whole body. So can we talk about that just a little bit about why yeah. everyone's stuck on chemical, but we need to look at electricity when it comes to the body. That's a huge paradigm shift that I made in my, you know, clinical practice with people that has been a game changer because I was guilty, I think, of exactly what you're talking about. Um, it was, oh, I am doing so, I'm helping these people so much more than traditional medicine because they're using pharmaceuticals and I'm using supplements, right? right, right. And it was still dealing like this with this, almost like this replacement model or this symptom suppression model of using chemicals, uh, whether it's in a natural supplement, which you, if you, you can't necessarily always call supplements natural, right? right. Um, or, or as a pharmaceutical method. Um, and you have to see that chemistry is slow. Chemical reactions are actually slower than electricity can flow. And we're not just talking about the nervous system because the water network Network of the body actually transmits electrical information and energy a thousand times faster than the nervous system even. So we're dealing, when we're talking about influencing the water network and influencing electrical flow and energy and electricity in the body, we're dealing with something that is happen it, it is the organizing and energy uh channels throughout the body and it has to be more foundational than chemistry because it happens so much faster than chemistry it distributes um both energy and information and so the biochemical reactions happen but they're almost like someone once told me i was reading i forget which one of the researchers i, I was reading but they almost said like the chemistry is like almost like an event takes place and you're journaling about it, right? The chemistry kind of lays a little bit of, of what happened almost as like a journaling. Um, maybe it was even Bruce Lipton, um, but, but, but actually that's not what's driving the function in the body. It's the electrical inputs and the ability to flow the electrical inputs and have this voltage that is what gives us a thriving body. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think that that, again, is we get so hyper-focused on these things, which I think are definitely foundational that we don't look at the quantum aspect. And like I mentioned in the beginning, you know, so many women, this, this fertility crisis has gotten to be so out of control. When I was going through my own struggles and anybody watching, my most recent podcast episode is linked in my bio, and it really goes into depth about the two years that I really spent just struggling and going through a lot of heartbreak you know, all these women that I'm talking to, all these women that I'm coming across, they are just in so much pain and struggle. And it's like, they're not being told this information. Again, they're to being told that it's silly, that it's woo woo. Like I remember asking one of my doctors about red light therapy, like, should I invest in a panel? Would that be, and I've even heard some of these experts on YouTube be like, oh, that's stupid. You know, red light, it doesn't do anything for fertility. And I swear that was one of the things that was like instrumental in helping with my reproductive organs. So how could something like red light help with fertility? Well, red in so many ways. And there's actually, I think fertility, I was having this conversation with um, Dr. Mike Belkowski, who owns uh, BioLite. Oh, I've heard you talk about him. I've got to get him on my podcast. You do. He combs through the literature. You would love him. And um, he and he talks about red light therapy in terms of women's health and, uh, and uh, endometri endometriosis and things like that. Is, and there's some massively amazing research supporting benefits for red light therapy for that in, it by, in and of itself, which could be a beneficial thing for people who are looking to conceive but for but um but in general with mitochondria or uh, with red light therapy is that they bet it benefits the mitochondria mitochondria soak in red and infrared light and they optimize their function so we just talked about mitochondria being stressed out you know we're losing voltage and so mitochondria can soak in those red and infrared frequencies as a way to reestablish their function reestablish the voltage inside of the cells yeah, I think it's fascinating. And what actually prompted me to buy a panel and start doing regular red light therapy was a study that actually Dr. Twyman told me about when I interviewed him for my podcast. He told me that there was a study that was done over in Europe 
with women over 40 who had had one or more failed IVF cycles. And after 60 days of just the red light therapy, that they had a 60% success rate in natural conception. And the oldest woman in the group was 50. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, why is no fertility doctor talking about this? Like, wh why is this not being told to women? You know, we, we're just gonna give them prescriptions and then have them do something like an IVF procedure, which, you know, if you wanna do that, cool. But if you don't have good mitochondrial function, going into IVF, it's not going to work. And then you're going to end up losing $45,000, $50,000, not to mention the emotional toll that that takes on your body, that takes on your family, that takes on your life. I mean, it's a huge, huge involved process. And so, like I said, it's not something that I'm against anyone doing, but it's like, why are we not trying these other things first, right? Like, why, why can't we talk about these other things before we make those types of investments? Oh, 100%. I mean, there's no downside to supporting your health with these quantum hormone balancing methods. There's like, there's no downside. It, it, it's like a no brainer to me, no matter where a woman is on her, her hormone balancing journey, whether... Yeah. You know, you could even be postmenopausal, right? And, right? and still can get the benefits of this stuff because this really is foundational. Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, I've since I've kind of come out with my story and talked about the fact that I did go through two rounds of IVF and it didn't work. I've had so many women reach out to me that said, I wish that I had been able to listen to this podcast, you know, because I really talk about and I don't go super specific. If you want super specific, Carrie and I are doing our a six week course, because I do think it's not just red light therapy, not just one thing. It's the combination of a quantum lifestyle that actually allowed me to conceive at age 42 and 43 now and almost 29 weeks pregnant. You know, it was the quantum lifestyle. It was everything put together in sequential order and doing it the right way, having contact with you, with Corey, with a lot of the people in the in the quantum health space that kind of just helped me through this, um, helped me not to lose hope. Um, you know, it's not, I don't think it's just, it's just like the one thing. I think it's, it's kind of everything put together. It, it totally is everything put together. And the part about like being able to get into specifics, every, everyone is unique. And I mean, there, there is still that component. Like there is no protocol that fits formula. everyone formula right and so these are all things that i that we find are foundational that you have especially found to be foundational on your journey to, to becoming pregnant and the cool part about an online course that i really love is being able to get to know the participants yeah. and interact with them and understand their context right. it's like oh you live in a city but perhaps now native emfs are your bigger issue or you know i mean or right. or you, you can, you can really start to help people at that level apply this at a, in a very specific way that you can't just give a broad protocol. These are things yeah. that are beneficial. So if anyone wants to go ahead and look into these things, we say, please do yeah. look into mitochondrial health, look into red light therapy, circadian rhythm we haven't even talked about, which is a oh, huge God. aspect of this. Um, but the beauty of a course is being able to really get into the nitty gritty with people in their context. I agree. I completely agree. And you know, I've just been posting on my page, and I know you do like pretty much every day about the circadian health piece of things, but maybe we could just touch on that briefly of like, how the heck does circadian rhythm impact fertility or just impact hormonal balance? Because again, not everybody that's listening wants to have a baby, but some people have endometriosis, some people have PCOS, some people are even like, premenopausal or postmenopausal and their hormones are giving them hell. So like how the heck does circadian rhythm come into balance with all of those things? Well, I mean, so when we talk about it, right, we, I, I think, I think everyone knows we, let's talk about a circadian rhythm, right? Like the idea that the body has every living creature, actually, not just humans have figured out over the course of a 24 hour cycle of day and night to coordinate various tasks. You know, it's like, it's like, okay, if I were to build, you know, a, a building, I wouldn't just do it haphazardly. I would have a very direct order with which I did everything. And that's the same thing with the function of our bodies. There's a, 
put an order in which things make sense. It would make no sense for me to make melatonin right now, tons of melatonin right now, because it's the middle of the afternoon right. and I don't want to be sleepy, right? I want to be productive. And so when it comes to um, circadian rhythm and hormones, the varying wavelengths of sunlight, sunlight that we get from the, you know, starting at sunrise throughout the morning, middle of the afternoon, and then towards sunset, that's all telling us different times where different hormones should be produced, yeah. regulated, where they get sent, where they're more active. And so if our circadian rhythm is not strong, which it's not going to be, if we live and work in an indoor, in an indoor environment, which most of us do, it's very hard to have appropriate hormonal signaling happening because we're missing those key light frequencies that our eyes are trying to capture for us to coordinate these hormones, these, these hormonal releases. And so the morning wavelengths of light are really, really key, I find, for uh, hormone balance and circadian rhythm. But equally important is the what we, what light we don't let our eyes see after dark. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a massive association. You do any, you pull up PubMed and put in um, artificial light at night or light at night and cancer, and you see a yeah, massive so connection. <laughs> Breast cancer, prostate cancer, ovarian thyroid. cancer, thyroid. So there we now know artificial light at night disrupts your hormones and we can you know we'll go into details about why and I mean, I don't, i'm fine with talking about why i don't care we can go into details but it's just important to know that light and your circadian rhythm are huge when it comes to having hormone balance in your body exactly and that was one of the things like I didn't own a pair of blue blockers. I just thought that was stupid. I always thought the people with blue blockers, which you're wearing, you're wearing your Viva Rays now. I got to give a shout out to Rudy of Viva Rays. <laughs> Rudy. <laughs> my, my screen is red and my window is wide open. So that's my excuse for not wearing my Viva Rays, but um, they are right here on my desk. <laughs> but I didn't own a pair of blue blockers. I thought, silly. And then when I actually started getting into the circadian aspect of things, I was like, holy crap, the difference that I just feel and that the people that I talk to that take some of my courses and that just are in my private groups that are doing this stuff kind of along with me, you, you notice such a huge difference in how you feel, how your energy is that you're like, whoa, once you, you know, if you're walking around at night and for whatever reason, you have to leave the house past sunset it's um it's massive how your body is like oh gosh you know like it it just feels super stressful you know and i don't think people unless you really experience that it's hard to really explain it but that's cortisol right so we don't want to be making cortisol after sunset we want melatonin which is a master antioxidant which is huge in fertility right if you have any sort of hormonal issue or fertility issue, your body and your body is not making adequate melatonin and sleep is a huge component in our course that we're going to be going over like all these different tweaks you can do for sleep. But if you're not making melatonin, forget about apoptosis, forget about autophagy, forget about keto and fasting, right? Like, it's great, but it's not going to do what all these experts say it's going to do if you're not having good sleep, right? A absolutely, right? And so, and then, then the lack of, or, and I'm glad you talked about melatonin our body makes because, again, this is where we think, oh, well, I'm just going to okay. pop a bunch of melatonin. Mm -hmm. And it all works as a cycle. It all works in, you know, a, a feedback loop. And when that feedback loop is off either because we're doing the wrong things like get, seeing artificial light at night and, and injecting a ton of cortisol into our bodies as opposed to and, and suppressing melatonin or we say oh i'm going to supplement a ton of melatonin and still stare at a blue lit screen how confusing how confusing to the body and so and and the like like you're saying like these are things that are just important for life and it's simple and i don't know when i look back on my journey to towards quantum health you know i i was dealing with adrenal fatigue right another kind of hormone imbalance there um and I rec, you know, I jumped through so many hoops and I feel like looking back and it's like, wow, I've, I've come, a, I've come a long way. I feel flipping amazing right now. It's like the best I've ever felt in my life. Um, and people are like, well, isn't what you do so hard? Like, isn't it hard? It's like, no, actually what I do now is 
easier than when I was really hyper focused on macronutrients or calories or um, exercise or hyper focused on you know like supplements and all these things. It's like no. I see the sunrise. I spend I spend a ton of time outside. I block the artificial light at night. My body craves that. Yeah. I I'm hungry within a certain time window. I eat the things and I crave the things that I know are actually good for my body now. So it's so cool how this all comes together. And I don't find this to be like a oh a 21 day cleanse or a or a a, a, a challenge, a six week challenge, right? No, this is stuff that's just it's a lifestyle. Food. It's a lifestyle, and you don't yeah. want once you live it you don't want to stop living this lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. It's like, and the stuff that we're going to do in the course is number one stuff that's going to help you preconception wise. If, if your goal is pregnancy, but then it will help you. I can say a hundred percent during your pregnancy because I'm, you know, in the third trimester now and everyone keeps asking me, how is your pregnancy at age 43 versus being pregnant at 28? And to be honest with you, 43 so far I mean I've still got 11 weeks to go here um, God willing you know 43 has actually been way easier than it was at 28 you know I have way more energy and I am literally up walking at sunrise my body naturally wakes up you know 10 15 minutes before sunrise got my shoes on out walking at the sunrise you know appetite's been good energy's been good I mean, it's remarkable the difference in pregnancy at age 43 versus 28. And the biggest difference is, you know, I'm doing, my circadian rhythms are on point. You know, I'm blocking artificial light at night. I am, my lifestyle is just completely different than it was. I'm not staying up watching Netflix and oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like people now scrolling on their phone at night, like, and they, I think people don't realize doing that is kind of similar. It's like, it's kind of similar to a carcinogen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Might, you might as well be smoking. You know I mean? It's very, very yeah. similar to that because we now know that shift work is considered a carcinogen. So that's just because they have a faulty light signaling, faulty light environment. Right. And as just going on with you having what you feel, feel like is your, a very healthy, healthy pregnancy, talk about, I, I, I think from then my perspective, it was my third, my, la my last kid, my third kid, Jack, was when I really felt like I had all of this stuff in play. And what a much better sleeper. What, what I mean, in, in terms of just, you're, just that alone, too. You know, I was told with my first that, oh, oh, your baby has his days and nights flipped. And he won't be able to switch that until he's about three months old when he can start making melatonin. And it's and with my second and my third, I learned better. They were outside, it's morning light, first thing right away. And they flipped their, their nights and days within three days. And it had nothing to do with them being able to make melatonin. We know now that it's the circadian light signaling. So to, these are all things that are just going to make you a more sane parent, too, when it comes to <laughs> diaper changes in the middle of the night, knowing that you're not going to wake your baby up insanely with insanely bright light to change oh, diapers yeah. you know all those things like that it's just really cool how it all comes together and it's going to benefit you not just if you're trying to conceive but throughout your pregnancy and even once the baby is born and to, to, to continue to keep both you and the baby as healthy as possible yeah i know it's like i wish we had more time in the day in the week because i would love to do like a quantum parenting yes. podcast with you like maybe that's yeah down the road that we actually record like a, you know, a few episodes of like a quantum parenting podcast, because I think that this information is absolutely vital to our children. I mean, my 14 year old, even though she has autism and she has a lot of issues, one of the things they tell you about kids with autism is like, oh, well, kids with autism just don't sleep. And I'm like, BS, <laughs> because this child sleeps, you know, we don't let her run around with an iPad. We don't t watch TV at night. We dim the lights. We do, you know, we do a lot of things for her. The first light that she sees is sunlight. She doesn't see a TV or a phone or even house lights. Like, there's a lot of things I do for her. And people are like, well, autistic kids, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, not mine. You know, I can't necessarily reverse all the things that, have, that, that she has. But she sleeps well, she's happy. She, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that the quantum lifestyle have done for my child, improved her behavior, her attention, like everything. 
Um, so I, I think it's, it's just like, we just take these things as like, oh, that's what the doctor says. That's what the medical community says. We should just accept it and move on. You know, like once you hit 35, it's impossible to get pregnant. Like when I first started, I decided at 41 years old that I wanted to start trying for baby number two. I was like, okay, I'm going to start trying. And I started kind of doing the research on women over 40 having babies and it's really daunting you know if you if you look at what are the chances of a woman over 40 actually conceiving naturally it's pretty low right um but i wasn't i w obviously i wasn't going to take that as like word i have to kind of biohack and try things for myself but until again i discovered this quantum lifestyle it wasn't going to happen it just really wasn't going to happen yeah, no, absolutely. And, and so, but what's, what's really cool about your journey is that, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't want to put words in your mouth. It's like, but after failed IVF, I don't know, did, did were you, ex, were you, ex, were you expecting? I mean, like all of a sudden, did you realize, like, were you like, wow, I'm pregnant, you know, it's like, holy cow, you know, it's like this quantum stuff really is, it, you know, it, it can do its thing. It can do exactly what, you know, we, we were hoping it would, but it's almost, it's almost like you assume that you have to get pregnant via IVF at a certain age. And that's, right. that's not the case. I've seen so many clients, even surprisingly, right? Like even not necessarily expecting to thinking that they were beyond their fertile ages, yeah. still having healthy hormones. Right. And so, and that's a good sign. That's a healthy yeah. thing, right? This is stuff that's just super supportive of the body in general, but that's, I mean, it's, it's what a cool story you have to, sh to share, Sarah. It's super cool. Yeah. I mean, after that second round failed, I was just at the level of devastation. I can't even describe. I mean, it was just number one, the emotional devastation. It was just horrible. And, but then like the financial devastation of like, I just did all this to my family and now we're in the whole 45 grand and we still don't have a baby. But in the, I had already connected with you. I had already connected with everyone and I was I had already started implementing a lot of the quantum stuff and so in the back of my mind I was like I know that this is going to happen I know that there's a way to do this and I just really was super strict with making sure I followed all these protocols that I did all these things and I had told myself you know if we don't get pregnant when we're going to try again in January I just said you know we're going to give ourselves a little break. We'll try again in January. If it doesn't work, I'll be open to trying IVF again. But we try on the first try after doing all the quantum stuff, you know, and just like really being methodical about it on the first try, we got pregnant. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, <'cause laughs> like, shocked. Like, did this actually just really work? You know? And so if anyone out there is listening that is kind of going through a journey like that and you've tried, I mean, I've tried all kinds of stuff um, and you've had losses. I had losses before we did IVF. That's what made me do the IVF was that I had lost babies and I was like, well, I have to do IVF because that's what the doctors were telling me. There is hope, right? There, you, you don't have to subscribe to this model that you need to spend all this money and that you need to do all these things in order for this to happen for you. I think that, that there's definitely a lot of hope. Yeah, absolutely. It, absolutely. I, I, that's such a good message to share. And I mean, I don't know where, where else you want to go with this, but I think it's important for people to understand the format of this class too, yes. right? you know? Um, I, 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 so we were, it's a six week course, right? And we're not saying in six weeks, you're guaranteed pregnancy, but what we're, what we are going to do is lay an amazing foundation of this information. And we want to go not just like the science why, but really heavy in the how, like how you will specifically apply this information to support your hormones and your, your fertility journey. So that's going to be really key. The, there'll be a weekly lecture, if you will, or a web webinar that's recorded. So you can watch that at your convenience. And there's also going to be time, uh, a live Q&A that Sarah and I do together every week, too, because we want to make sure that we answer your questions and that you know how to use this information that serves you the best. Right. And then we'll also have the group format. So like in between lecture and live Q&A, there's a place where, number one, you can connect with other people that are on the same journey. But number two, you can kind of ask little short questions here and there about how to implement certain things and if certain things apply to you or don't. And so it, I think it's 
super comprehensive in, in providing support as well as providing education for people who are in this situation for sure. Right. So, so that's exactly it. We're heavy in support, heavy in how to apply it. You'll have, a, it's lifetime access, right? To the course yeah. material. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's definitely a great investment that you can make because you'll be able to refer back to it if you need to. Right. And, and please like, you know, Sarah and I, I feel like we're pretty approachable. Like yeah. don't hesitate, you know, to, to reach out to. And if anyone has any questions, please, please, please send me a DM. I'd, I'd love to answer questions, but if you want, want to know if this course is a good fit for you, yeah. um, I, I, we just want to make this, you know, this information accessible and we want it to be a game changer when it comes to being able to get pregnant. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm definitely going to, a lot of people have asked if we're going to save this, I'm going to save this on my profile and I'll also upload it to YouTube and then mm -hmm. audio only podcast as well. So you can listen to it on audio if you're like a podcast person and then you can also watch it on YouTube. So if anyone's like, oh, I want to watch this, but I don't necessarily want to watch it now, then that stuff, it's going to be an option so someone can watch it later. And we'll do another Q&A. I, I know we have a date for that. I can't even remember the date. It's in my calendar too, right? We'll be doing this again. We can like bring questions up specifically, right, about the program or about, you know, ask yeah. me anything basically is what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, anything else you want to add to the conversation, Carrie? No, I just love the clinical application of this stuff, specifically towards people who are, uh, who are, you know, uh, on a fertility journey like you or Sarah. I just am excited because I do understand how devastating these types of, you know, failed preg or failed infertility or uh, failed uh, IVF can be, miscarriage after miscarriage. And so I'm really, really excited to hopefully help people embrace this information, embrace this lifestyle and, and have a successful pregnancy. Yeah, me too. And I think I want to just kind of like put it out there how common it is, because it's something that I didn't share about. I have a huge social media following. Well, not like super huge, but like comparatively big compared to most people. Yeah. And I was going through all of this stuff in 2021. I didn't say a word because, you know, number one, I'm processing it. I'm going through a lot of pain, but also I think there's a lot of shame involved in pregnancy loss and in seeking help for fertility. There's a lot of shame around it. And when I started kind of putting myself out there, I literally have, I mean, women daily, daily now, sometimes multiple times a day. And I, that's when I kind of started screenshotting you. I'm like, Carrie, we got to do something about this of women just reaching out to me of all ages that are like, I've had five miscarriages. I've had multiple. I've been trying to get pregnant for years, but no success. Like nobody talks about it, but literally one in every four pregnancies, not necessarily people, but pregnancies, because people have multiple pregnancies, one in every four ends in a loss. And that number keeps going up and up and up every single year. And having gone through that myself is literally one of the most devastating things I think that you can go through for yourself and that it's devastating for the partner as well. Um, I just, I, I want to help women to avoid that if at all possible, because it is just one of the hardest things you could literally ever go through and yeah, have this social media following didn't say a word because it's like <laughs> people don't understand. Well, no right. And as a, health in, as a health influencer, you're like, well, it, 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 I, it's like, wait a second, how can I admit that I'm struggling with this and I'm a right. health influencer, you know? Right. And, right. and then you, then you realize that we're all being bombarded by the things that are creating da that, that, that are, that are causing infertility that are causing hormone imbalance. Right. And yeah. we have to shift the paradigm and extend it beyond food, extend yeah. it beyond supplements. It's got to yeah. go further because we all need it. We, we absolutely all need it. And we want to be able to talk about it openly because there should be no shame. You know, we're all going, we're, we're all, we want to support you. I mean, we're in this together, li literally. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you guys are interested, we have like a, a little information course that you can go take. It's free. And I've got it in my profile. It's in Carrie's profile either. Also, and if you're listening to the replay, that'll be in the info section. And of course, you can reach out to Carrie and I both if you have questions or, you know, about the course or just anything at all. We're here to support and help. And uh, yeah, anything else you want to add, Carrie? No, no, this is great, Sarah. Thanks for chatting. Yeah, thank you. And we'll, we'll definitely talk again soon. Thank you guys for watching. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.